Mycoplasma bovis is a bacterium that causes illness in cattle such as mastitis, pneumonia and arthritis. Widespread internationally, it first made itself known in New Zealand in July 2017. While MPI works to control the spread of the disease and decide if it's possible to eradicate it from this country, Dairy NZ is helping farmers to protect themselves and their animals. Six months ago we got rumours that there was Mbovis in the area. I don't actually have Mbovis on, on my farm. It's um, for, from home for me, it's probably four or five farms away. Um, but I do oversee a couple of farms that it's probably one farm away from. And so we discovered it was there and we had the farmer meetings. About our third meeting, the farmers were starting to get very disgruntled with MPI and, and one of the farmers stood up and said, look, this is actually a, you know, a farmer problem. We're going to have to fix it. MPI can come out with regulations and all that sort of stuff, but unless farmers believe in it and actually drive it, it's not going to happen. This is an animal to animal movement of this disease. It's not on the air, it's not on the water. So get your boundaries, make sure you're not touching the neighbours. If you're going to have to buy stock in, think really strongly before you do. Think of all your other options and then make sure you're, you're careful with what you buy. Ask the questions you don't want to ask. Minimise your access points on farm. You don't want that stray cow that arrives at the cow shed. You don't want her turning up anymore. You, know, you just can't have that. Um, so it's doing the simple things and that'll get you 95% of the way there. From there on we can build on that but get the basics right first. Nate's been around for a while and it hasn't worked but it hasn't worked because farmers haven't got on board with it. Um, yeah there's some difficulties there. Yes as farmers we possibly need to step into some training to actually get it there and, and get our system sorted. Um, but you know, if we want to actually take biosecurity seriously, we've got to do this. I think we all respond in different ways and to me I'm incredibly optimistic, I believe we can beat it. It's not going to be in the next six months, it's going to be an ongoing process but we'll get there. But the biggest thing is we've got to step to the plate and each individual farm has to do what they need to do. I thought right we've got to do something here. So we basically went through this, ticked all of these off and made sure it fit, fit, fit for us. Your farm, though, yeah. Right? And you did something similar? We're part of the Align Farms group and my farm specifically is Align Longfield. We're one of four dairy farms and we also have two support blocks, one up at Mount Summers and one just down the road in Ashburton. We sat down in the boardroom with all the managers of the farms and went through using the uh, Dairy and Z Warrant of Fitness to give us our framework and went through and identified our big, big risk areas and our major one is trucking. So we do truck all our cows over winter time up to the runoff, like it's all fully self-contained but we are still moving animals. So we contacted, it's Woodley's Transport we use here, and said we would like you guys to turn up with your trucks. If they're going direct to slaughter, the trucks still need to be clean, but it's not as big a risk. But if we're moving um, farm to farm, like from our farm and picking up another load somewhere in another load, can you please turn up clean and can we be the first pickup? And they already do export heifers, so I was quite surprised. They said, yep, not a problem at all. The only risk they said is they might turn up a little bit late because they've got to clean their trucks, but if we have to wait now to ensure the safety of our farm. I'm, I'm on board with that. It won't worry me in the slightest. The Align group itself, one of the big pushes that they had when they set it up was to have high quality infrastructure with good systems, good staffing, good rosters to look after everyone. And that really suited um, the biosecurity implementation quite well because instead of us worrying about how we're going to make sure that all of the infrastructure is in place, it was all here. So it was just a case of really add ons. It's like from the farm gate, as you drive in, there's a big beautiful sign there that says everyone must sign in onto the farm using our website. There's no excuse if you don't have the internet because the internet's in the cow shed. And at the cow shed we have our biosecurity map essentially and it's got a little introduction saying that we have implemented these biosecurity matters. We've zoned our farm into two zones. We've got green zone and red zone. So for example, this is green zone here and the paddock next door is red. And what that means is a green zone is where no cows go. So there is, with especially bovis, it's, a, it's mostly cow to cow contact. So there's no risk of, well, the risk is very, very minimal in a green zone of spreading the disease. And then anywhere where people enter a red zone, that's what we deem to be a high risk chance of transferring disease. So at all the entry points into the red zones, we've got a little sign that says, you are now entering a red zone, please contact myself before you enter. 
It's probably not the worst disease that could have hit New Zealand, Mycophysum bovis, but I think it's going to have a, a lot of real positive spin-offs for the industry that we're going to sharpen up a lot of the things that were pretty poor in the past. Everyone in the industry realises now how important biosecurity is and it's not hard. We haven't physically dealt with the disease, but our biosecurity measures haven't really changed anything, to be honest. Instead of coming to the cow shed, walking straight in, you give your boots a quick scrub now, those kind of things. You realise there's a lot of information out there. So we've created the biosecurity WAF in conjunction with farmers to make sure it's practical and also in conjunction with vet groups and beef and lamb. So it's got everything a farm needs and it'll take about an hour to complete. We're advising farmers that they do that with their vet because their vet knows their farm, knows their system and obviously has that technical expertise around animal disease. But the WAF also uh, will look at your biosecurity in terms of pests and weeds as well. So it's not just animal diseases we're thinking about, it's what you can protect your whole farm from. One of the real key areas that farmers can look at is double fencing their boundary fences. Obviously there are permanent barriers with roadways or shelter belts, etc. But when you, one grazing paddock is backed onto another grazing paddock, it's really important to either put in a permanent fence or you can put in an additional one wire fence. Uh, and cows can still graze under that wire, so it shouldn't uh, decrease any pasture utilised on farm, but it just adds that extra safety to stop those cows coming in nose to nose contact. We've got lots of information on our biosecurity pages on our Dairy NZ website, and we also have a dedicated Mycoplasma bovis page as well. And pretty much a lot of the information is on both those pages. And also, please feel free to call us on the 0800 4 Dairy NZ free phone call, and uh, we've got a number of team that can help uh, with any questions. <coughs>